Have you ever wondered what separates the most successful people from the rest? Why some seem to effortlessly achieve while others struggle, despite having similar abilities? The answer, according to world-renowned Stanford psychologist Carol S. Dweck, is mindset. Your mindset is the view you adopt of yourself, and it can profoundly shape your life, determining your accomplishments, happiness, and even your health. In her groundbreaking book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, Dweck reveals the power of mindset to impact achievement in virtually every area of human endeavor. Her decades of research show how the beliefs we hold about our talents and abilities can either launch us to higher levels of success or hold us back from realizing our potential. Dweck identifies two basic mindset types we can harbor, a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset believe their basic qualities like intelligence or talent are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their abilities instead of developing them. They believe that talent alone creates success, without effort. In contrast, people with a growth mindset believe their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Talent is just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience essential for great accomplishment. Adopting a growth mindset is not just about being optimistic. It's about seeing abilities as skills to be cultivated through effort. It's about embracing challenges, persisting in the face of setbacks, learning from criticism, and finding inspiration in the achievements of others. With a growth mindset, you believe you can grow, and that belief transforms your approach to everything from school to work, to sports, to relationships. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into Dweck's fascinating findings to truly understand the mindset concept and how it plays out in real life. We'll explore striking examples of how mindset has impacted some of the world's most successful people, from Mozart to Darwin to Michael Jordan. We'll see how these simple beliefs people carry with them shape their behavior in powerful ways, determining whether they become the person they want to be and whether they accomplish the things they value. Whether you're a parent, teacher, coach, or simply someone who wants to improve yourself, understanding mindset is absolutely key. It can help you raise resilient children, motivate students, build winning teams, foster fulfilling relationships, and create a life marked by growth rather than stagnation. If you've ever struggled with a challenge, had trouble bouncing back from failure, or wondered how to help others succeed, Dweck's powerful ideas can be revolutionary. To truly grasp the power of mindset, we need to understand the two main types Dweck identified through her research, the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Let's take a closer look at each one and how they impact people's behavior. People with a fixed mindset believe that basic qualities like intelligence or talent are simply fixed traits. You're either smart or you're not, you have certain talents, or you don't. They think these inborn traits are the main cause of success, with little need for further development. Here are some key characteristics of people operating under a fixed mindset. They avoid challenges, preferring to stick with what they know to maintain their sense of being smart or talented. They see difficult tasks as risky, a potential threat to their self-image. They give up easily in the face of obstacles, seeing setbacks as evidence of their lack of ability. Rather than persisting through difficulties, they take failure or struggle as a sign that they're just not cut out for the task at hand. They see putting in effort as a bad thing, a sign you're not naturally good at something. If you were truly talented, things would come easily to you. Having to work hard is seen as evidence of deficiency. They ignore useful feedback, 
taking constructive criticism as a personal attack rather than an opportunity to improve. They feel defined by failure, so they avoid it at all costs instead of learning from it. They feel threatened by the success of others, interpreting it as a negative reflection on themselves. Rather than finding inspiration or lessons in the achievements of others, they feel diminished by them. Ultimately, people with fixed mindsets are driven by the desire to appear smart and avoid looking dumb. They're in a constant battle to prove their worth, validate their abilities, and hide any deficiencies. This leads to an urgency to succeed but a brittleness when faced with adversity. They've hitched their self-esteem to achievement without effort, a precarious position. John McEnroe, the tennis star known for his on-court outbursts, McEnroe raged against umpires, blamed others for his losses and trash-talked opponents. He saw his talent as so innate that he didn't feel he could improve. Losses were threats to his self-image that he couldn't tolerate. Lee Iacocca, the former CEO of Chrysler, who focused more on appearing like a great leader than being one. Iacocca was obsessed with his public image, his perceived superiority to rivals, and proving the naysayers wrong. He was driven by a need to show his talent, rather than develop Chrysler for the long run. So, in summary, the fixed mindset is all about proving you're smart or talented as is, seeking out easy wins to validate your abilities, and avoiding challenges that might show weaknesses, it's a restrictive mindset rooted in fear of failure. Let's contrast that with the growth-oriented way of thinking. People with a growth mindset have a very different approach. They believe that basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. They see brains and talent as just the starting point, the potential to grow and improve with effort. Here's how the growth mindset tends to play out. Challenges are embraced rather than avoided. Growth-oriented people see difficult tasks as opportunities to learn and stretch their abilities. They're not discouraged by initial confusion or setbacks. Persistence is the hallmark of the growth mindset. When faced with obstacles, people with this mindset stay the course. They see failure not as a lack of intelligence, but as a springboard for growth, an opportunity to dig in and try harder or differently next time. Effort is seen as the path to mastery. Growth Mindset People believe effort activates ability, that even geniuses have to work hard for their accomplishments. They understand that no road is easy and struggle is just part of the journey. Criticism is a welcome source of information. People with growth mindsets can take in feedback as valuable input to help them improve. They don't see negative feedback as a threat to their self-image, but as an opportunity to get better. The success of others is inspiring and instructive. Rather than feeling diminished by another person's achievements, Growth mindset individuals are inspired by them and seek to learn from them. They view successes as examples of what's possible with hard work. So, in essence, the growth mindset is focused on development through dedication. It's about stretching yourself to learn something new, constantly expanding your abilities rather than staying in your comfort zone and risking stagnation. With a growth mindset, your self-image isn't tied to your immediate achievements, but to your commitment to progress over time. Michael Jordan, who was famously cut from his high school basketball team, rather than seeing that rejection as a fixed judgment on his ability, Jordan committed to getting better, practicing for hours every day to hone his skills. Even at the peak of his success, he focused more on constant improvement than proving his talent. Jack Welch, former CEO of General Electric, who was known for his obsession with developing people. 
Welch spent a huge amount of his time identifying promising employees and giving them opportunities to grow. He saw talent as something to be nurtured rather than a fixed commodity. The key insight is that growth-oriented people aren't simply optimists. In some cases, they may actually be more realistic about the work needed for success, but they have faith in human potential, both in themselves and others. They see skills as things to be cultivated, not just displayed. This dynamic view is what keeps them moving forward in the face of challenges. So in summary, the growth mindset is about believing intelligence and abilities can be grown, and backing that belief up with effort. It's a focus on getting smarter rather than proving you already are smart. And over time, that focus makes all the difference. Importantly, Dweck emphasizes that we all have elements of both mindsets in different areas. You might have a fixed view of your math ability, but a growth approach to your people skills. The key is to recognize which mindset you tend to operate from and the impact that has. Because as we'll see, these mindsets shape our behavior in profound ways, determining the risks we take, the resilience we show, and the paths we ultimately follow. Shifting towards a growth orientation, even just a bit, can be truly transformative. So as we've explored these two mindset types, you may have recognized some of your own attitudes and behaviors. Do you tend to avoid challenges or embrace them, crumble in the face of criticism or use it as fuel to get better? See failures as fatal or as opportunities to learn. Taking an honest look at your default responses can be an eye-opening experience. Most of us, Dweck's research shows, carry elements of both mindsets. But we often tilt more one way than the other, and that tilt has major consequences for our lives. If you identify with more fixed mindset statements, like, I'm either good at something or not, or, if I fail I'm no good, don't despair. Mindsets can be changed. But the first step is simply being aware of your current way of thinking. Try noticing when fixed mindset thoughts arise, like wanting to quit a project as soon as it gets challenging or bristling at a co-worker's success. Those knee-jerk reactions are great clues to how your mindset is shaping your behavior. Once you catch yourself, you can start intentionally leaning the other way, interpreting struggles as opportunities to learn, criticism as constructive feedback, and failures as information to help you grow. It takes constant practice, but each time you successfully stretch yourself, you build that growth muscle. And over time, operating from a growth perspective won't take nearly as much effort. It will simply be your new normal, an almost automatic way of approaching challenges and processing the world around you. That's the power of changing your mindset. It's not about forcing temporary change, but gradually rewiring your default responses. As we continue exploring Dweck's research and examples, keep this key distinction in mind. Are you oriented towards proving your abilities or improving them? Validating your worth or developing your potential? Appearing successful or actually stretching yourself? Your honest answers will give you important clues to your underlying beliefs. And by the end, you'll be armed with proven strategies to shift your mindset in a more growth-oriented direction, opening up new worlds of possibility. Let's keep exploring this fascinating concept and see how it plays out across life. Now that we understand the key differences between fixed and growth mindsets, let's explore how these ways of thinking take root in the first place. What experiences shape our beliefs about ability and effort? And what messages do we absorb from parents, teachers, coaches and the culture at large that push us towards one mindset or the other? 
Dweck's research provides fascinating insights into the origins of our beliefs about ourselves. She and her colleagues have studied mindsets in action with people of all ages, from preschoolers to business executives. And across contexts, some clear patterns emerge. One of the most striking findings is the impact of different kinds of praise. The way we compliment children and the traits we choose to call out can have a huge effect on the mindset they develop. In a now famous set of studies, Dweck and her team gave fifth graders a series of puzzles to solve. After the first set, some children were praised for their intelligence. Wow, you got eight right. That's a really good score. You must be smart at this. Others were praised for their effort. Wow, you got eight right. That's a really good score. You must have worked really hard. The content of the praise varied by just one word, smart versus hard, but that word made all the difference. In subsequent rounds, the ability-praised kids chose easier puzzles, shied away from challenges, and lost confidence when tasks got harder. The effort-praised kids did the opposite. They picked more challenging puzzles and showed greater persistence when they struggled. These differing reactions speak volumes about the mindsets the kids were absorbing. The smart praise pushed students into a fixed mindset, making them believe they had a certain amount of intelligence that needed to be proven over and over. Struggle became a threat to their self-image rather than an opportunity to grow. The effort praise, on the other hand, encouraged a growth mindset by portraying ability as something to be developed. Kids got the message that engagement and hard work were valued over immediate perfection. Stretching themselves was the goal, not protecting some innate gift. Of course, this doesn't mean we should never praise talent or outcome. Kids need to know when they've done something well, but the emphasis matters immensely. Focusing on the process, the strategies used, the persistence shown, sends a very different message than just trumpeting the result. Some examples of process praise. I like how you tried all kinds of strategies on that math problem until you finally got it. You thought of a lot of different ways to do it and found the one that worked. I like that you took on that challenging project for your science class. It will take a lot of work doing the research, designing the experiment, buying the parts and building it. Boy, you're going to learn a lot of great things. I like the way you stayed at your desk and kept your concentration in order to keep working on that puzzle. You're developing your thinking skills. The key insight is that the way we praise creates powerful mindset messages. Focusing on effort and process cultivates a growth orientation by making it clear that we value commitment over immediate perfection. It portrays struggles and setbacks as part of the learning experience rather than signs of failure. And it motivates kids to take on challenges and persist in the face of difficulty, exactly the behaviours that lead to long-term success. So if you're a parent, teacher or coach, pay close attention to the kind of feedback you give. A few simple tweaks to your praise can make a world of difference in the mindsets you encourage. Another key factor in mindset development is the way a culture views talent and achievement. When we portray accomplishments as the result of inborn gifts rather than effort and learning, we risk pushing people towards a fixed view of their abilities. Take the common myth of effortless genius, the idea that truly talented people shouldn't have to work hard for their successes. We love stories of naturals who excel without trying, like Mozart casually composing masterpieces or Michael Jordan nailing game winners in his rookie year. But these portrayals often obscure the immense effort behind the accomplishments we admire. As Dweck writes, even geniuses work hard. Mozart, Edison, Curie, Darwin and Cezanne were not simply born with talent. They cultivated it through tremendous and sustained effort. 
Similarly, hard work often becomes a badge of honour for athletes. The reality is that most overnight successes are anything but. They're usually the product of years of dedication and practice, honing skills, learning from missteps and staying the course in the face of obstacles. But because we don't see that backstory, we attribute their triumphs to raw, inborn talent. This myth is especially pernicious because it makes struggle seem like a sign you're not good enough. If success is supposed to come easily to the truly gifted, then having to work hard can feel like proof of inferior abilities. Why strive if you don't think you have the right stuff to succeed? Dweck saw this phenomenon play out in real time with one of her grad students, who'd been labelled a genius as a teenager. He, more than anyone, should have welcomed challenges and persevered in the face of setbacks. But the burden of genius was too great for him. He feared challenges and ran from difficulty, ensuring that he never lived up to his potential. The student had absorbed the idea that true talent shouldn't need development, that having to work hard meant he wasn't the genius he'd been branded as, and that belief held him back from the very efforts that could have made him successful. So, as a society, we need to be careful about the achievement narratives we create and celebrate, portraying accomplishments as the result of grit and growth rather than gifts sends a powerful message that success is within reach for anyone willing to put in the work. Some ways to reframe talent in a growth-oriented way. Instead of saying, she's a natural, try, she must have worked really hard to develop that skill. This acknowledges the effort behind the achievement. Instead of asking, are you good at this? Ask, what did you do to get better at this? This shifts the focus from innate ability to the process of improvement. Instead of complimenting a child for being so smart, praise them for taking on challenges, using good strategies and sticking with difficult tasks. This reinforces behaviours that create a growth orientation. The more we portray achievement as the product of dedication and learning, rather than inborn gifts, the more we create a culture that encourages growth. When people see effort as the path to mastery, they're more likely to embrace challenges and persist in the face of setbacks. They understand that struggle is not a sign of weakness, but a springboard for progress. Dweck's research has particularly profound implications for the way we educate children. The messages students absorb about their abilities from the way we group them to the way we grade them, can have a powerful impact on the mindsets they develop. One common practice that can push kids towards a fixed mindset is ability grouping. When we label students as gifted or slow, we risk sending the message that their abilities are static traits rather than things to be developed. Students in the high groups may become afraid of making mistakes and losing their status, while those in the low groups may come to see themselves as incapable of improvement. Dweck saw this play out in a study of 7th graders who were tracked into high and average math groups based on a test. Despite having the exact same scores, students in the high group showed greater motivation and better performance over time than those labelled average. The group label alone was enough to shape their beliefs about their potential. Grading practices can also have unintended mindset consequences. When the emphasis is on proving ability rather than improving it, students may become more focused on protecting their image than stretching themselves to learn. They may avoid challenging work that could lower their scores or cheat to maintain their status. Dweck recounts the story of a high school that eliminated grade reporting for freshmen. The goal was to encourage risk-taking and reduce stress, but teachers quickly noticed a change in student behaviour. They reported that the students were now far more willing to try new things. 
to take on challenging tasks and to keep working at them. The teachers said the difference was stunning. Instead of playing it safe to preserve their grades, the students engaged more deeply with the material. The shift in focus from proving ability to developing it freed students to challenge themselves and learn from their mistakes. They no longer saw struggles as threats to their self-image, but as opportunities for growth. So as educators, it's crucial to examine the mindset messages embedded in our practices. Are we emphasizing effort and improvement, or just rewarding immediate perfection? Are we portraying challenges as opportunities to grow, or as risks to avoid? Are we teaching students to value learning over looking smart? Some ways to cultivate growth mindsets in the classroom. Emphasize the process of learning rather than just the end product. Celebrate students for taking on challenges, trying new strategies, and sticking with difficult tasks, not just for getting the right answers. Give feedback that focuses on effort and improvement rather than just ability. Instead of saying, you're so smart, try I like how you kept trying different ways until you got it. Encourage students to take risks and learn from their mistakes. Create a classroom culture where struggles are seen as opportunities to grow rather than signs of failure. Use cooperative learning structures that emphasize collaboration and group problem solving. When students work together, they see that everyone struggles sometimes and that setbacks are part of the learning process. Teach students about the brain's ability to grow and change with effort. Helping them understand the neuroscience of learning can be a powerful way to shift their mindsets. When we create classroom environments that value growth over immediate perfection, we set students up for long-term success. They learn to embrace challenges, persist in the face of setbacks, and see effort as the path to mastery, exactly the mindset they'll need to thrive in the face of life's inevitable difficulties. The way we praise, the way we portray achievement, and the way we structure learning environments, all of these factors shape the mindsets people develop. When we emphasize gifts over growth, or portray accomplishments as the result of innate talent rather than effort, we risk pushing people towards a fixed view of their abilities. But when we celebrate the process of learning, recognizing the struggles and strategies behind success, we cultivate a growth orientation. We send the message that challenges are opportunities, that effort is essential, and that setbacks are simply part of the journey. As parents, teachers and coaches, we have the power to shape mindsets through the feedback we give and the environments we create. By being intentional about the messages we send, we can help young people develop the resilience and love of learning they'll need to reach their fullest potential. And as individuals, we can examine our own beliefs about ability and achievement. We can catch ourselves in fixed mindset thinking and intentionally lean in a growth-oriented direction we can reframe struggles as opportunities to grow, criticism as constructive feedback, and failures as valuable information. Over time, operating from a growth perspective won't just be an intentional practice, it will simply be our default way of approaching challenges and processing the world around us. And that shift in mindset can be truly transformative, opening up new realms of possibility in every area of our lives. So as we continue exploring Dweck's powerful research, keep this key insight in mind. The beliefs we carry about our own potential matter immensely. They shape the risks we take, the resilience we show, and the paths we ultimately follow. And by shifting those beliefs in a more growth-oriented direction, even slightly, we set ourselves up for greater success and fulfillment over time. Now that we understand how mindsets develop, let's take a closer look at how they operate in real time. What does a fixed mindset look like in action 
compared to a growth orientation? And how do these differing beliefs shape people's thoughts, feelings and behaviours in powerful ways? Dweck's research provides a fascinating window into the inner workings of the two mindsets. Through experiments, interviews and real-world observations, she and her colleagues have documented striking differences in how fixed and growth-oriented individuals approach challenges, process setbacks and interact with the world around them. One of the clearest distinctions between the two mindsets is the way they view challenges and feedback. Fixed mindset individuals tend to see difficulties as threats to their self-image, opportunities to prove their ability or lack thereof. Growth-oriented people, on the other hand, view challenges as opportunities to learn and improve. Dweck saw this difference play out in a series of studies on students' brainwaves as they answered difficult questions and received feedback. She and her team measured electrical activity in the cortical regions associated with conscious attention, and what they found was striking. Students with a fixed mindset were only interested in hearing feedback that reflected directly on their present ability, but tuned out information that could help them learn and improve. They even showed no interest in hearing the right answer when they had gotten a question wrong because they had already filed it away in the failure category. In other words, fixed mindset individuals were so focused on validating their ability that they couldn't engage with information that could actually help them get better. They wanted the A, not the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. Growth-oriented students, on the other hand, showed a very different pattern of attention. Students with a growth mindset, in contrast, paid close attention to information that could stretch their knowledge. They were especially keen to understand their mistakes so they could correct them going forward. For these learners, failure wasn't a permanent label but valuable data to inform future efforts. They understood that setbacks were part of the learning process and they were eager to extract insights they could use to improve. This differing orientation, seeking validation versus seeking growth, plays out across a wide range of settings. In relationships, fixed mindset individuals tend to view conflicts as threats to their self-image. A partner's complaint becomes an attack on their character rather than an opportunity to strengthen the relationship. Growth-oriented people, on the other hand, are more likely to view disagreements as opportunities for understanding and improvement. In the workplace, fixed mindset employees tend to focus more on proving their worth than on developing their skills. They may avoid challenging projects that could expose weaknesses or blame external factors when things go wrong. Growth-oriented employees, in contrast, tend to embrace challenges as opportunities to learn and take responsibility for their missteps. Some common fixed mindset thoughts in action. I failed the test. I'm just not good at math. Viewing setbacks as evidence of fixed traits. She's criticizing my work. She must think I'm incompetent. Interpreting feedback as a threat to self-image. I got the promotion. Clearly, I'm better suited for leadership than my colleagues. Using successes to validate superiority. I'm not going to try that new strategy. I don't want to risk looking stupid. Avoiding challenges that could reveal weaknesses. And some contrasting growth mindset thoughts. I didn't do as well as I wanted on that project. What can I learn from the experience? Viewing setbacks as opportunities for learning. That feedback stung, but she made some good points. How can I use them to improve my work? Interpreting criticism as constructive guidance. I got the promotion. Time to learn some new skills so I can be successful in this role viewing success as a stepping stone for growth. This new responsibility is a stretch, but I'm excited to see how much I can grow, embracing challenges as opportunities for development. 
Do any of these thought patterns sound familiar? If so, you're not alone. We all carry a mix of fixed and growth mindset beliefs, often without realizing it. The key is to become aware of our knee-jerk reactions and intentionally lean in a growth-oriented direction. Over time, that practice can fundamentally reshape our relationship to challenges and feedback, setting us up for greater resilience and success. Another key difference between the two mindsets is how they respond to setbacks. Fixed mindset individuals tend to view failures as evidence of their own inadequacy, a reflection of some innate deficit they can't overcome. Growth-oriented people, on the other hand, see setbacks as temporary obstacles to be overcome through effort and learning. Dweck saw this distinction clearly in a study of pre-med students at an elite university. She and her colleagues tracked the students' grades, attitudes and coping strategies over two years of challenging coursework. What they found was telling. The most dramatic difference between the two groups emerged in their attitude toward setbacks. Those with growth mindsets reported that they would study harder or try a different strategy for mastering the material when they hit an obstacle. But those with fixed mindsets were more likely to say that they would study less in the future, try to cheat on the next test, or simply give up altogether. For fixed mindset students, a poor grade was taken as final proof of their inability to succeed as a doctor. Rather than motivating them to work harder, setbacks sapped their determination and drove them to look for easier paths. Growth-oriented students, on the other hand, viewed challenges as par for the coursey in a demanding field. Poor performances became cues to double down on their studies or seek out new strategies, not reasons to quit. They understood that struggle was part of the learning process and they were determined to find a way through. This differing response to setbacks has profound implications for long-term success. In a world where failures big and small are inevitable, the ability to pick oneself up and keep moving forward is essential. Fixed mindset. Individuals often get stuck, interpreting missteps as personal failings rather than opportunities for growth. Over time, that response can lead to a cycle of avoidance, stagnation and self-doubt. Growth-oriented people, on the other hand, are more likely to persist in the face of difficulty. They view setbacks as temporary hurdles to be overcome, not permanent barriers to their goals. That resilience allows them to take risks, bounce back from failures and keep reaching for their full potential. Some common fixed mindset responses to setbacks. I didn't get the job. I'm just not cut out for that kind of work. Viewing rejection as evidence of fixed inadequacy. I knew I shouldn't have taken that advanced class. I'm not smart enough to handle it. Attributing struggles to lack of innate ability. I failed the audition. I have no talent as a musician. Interpreting setbacks as final judgments of worth. Why bother trying again? I'll just humiliate myself. Avoiding future challenges to protect self-image. And some contrasting growth mindset responses. I didn't get the job. What can I learn from the experience to be a stronger candidate next time? Viewing rejection as an opportunity for improvement. This class is really pushing me. I need to find new strategies to keep up. Attributing struggles to the need for better approaches. I didn't perform my best at the audition. Time to practice harder for the next one. Interpreting setbacks as cues to increase effort. That failure stung, but I'm not giving up. I'll keep trying until I get it. Persisting in the face of challenges. Again, these differing responses often happen beneath the level of conscious awareness. In the moment, our fixed mindset voice can be quite loud, tempting us to give up or protect our ego. But with practice, 
we can learn to talk back from a place of growth, reminding ourselves that failure is not a final destination, but a stepping stone on the path to success. Over time, that intentional self-talk can become second nature. We can rewire our default responses to challenges, replacing knee-jerk avoidance with determined engagement. And that shift in perspective can open up new worlds of possibility, empowering us to take risks, learn from missteps, and keep reaching for our highest aspirations. One of Dweck's most powerful insights is the role that language plays in shaping our mindsets. The words we use to describe our abilities and experiences can either reinforce a sense of fixed limitation or cultivate a belief in growth and potential. Dweck often points to the transformative power of one simple word, yet. Adding this tiny term to our self-talk can fundamentally shift the way we interpret challenges and setbacks. Instead of saying, I can't do this, we can say, I can't do this yet. That small change communicates a world of possibility, the belief that our abilities are not fixed, but can be developed over time. Dweck saw the impact of this linguistic shift firsthand in a study of elementary school students. She and her colleagues gave the children a series of increasingly difficult puzzles to solve, eventually reaching a level that was beyond their current abilities. Some of the students reacted with fixed mindset language, saying things like, I'm not good at this, or I give up. Others, however, embraced the power of yet. Many of the students with a growth mindset said things like, I love a challenge, or I was hoping this would be informative. One even pulled the experimenter aside as he was leaving and whispered, I was hoping this would be hard. It wasn't just what they said, though. It was how they said it. They spoke in a tone of excitement and enthusiasm. In fact, many of them thought the experiment was over because the puzzles had gotten too easy. They were hungry for more. For these growth-oriented students, difficulty wasn't a threat to their self-image, but an exciting opportunity to stretch themselves. They understood that their current ability was not the end of the story, that with effort and persistence, they could eventually master the challenge at hand. The power of yet extends far beyond the classroom. In our personal and professional lives, adopting this growth-oriented language can help us reframe challenges as opportunities and setbacks as temporary hurdles on the path to success. Instead of saying, I'm not a math person, we can say, I'm not a math person yet. Instead of declaring, I'm terrible at public speaking, we can say, I'm not a great public speaker yet. These small linguistic shifts may seem trivial at first, but over time they can have a profound impact on our mindset and behavior. By communicating a belief in our own growth and potential, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and experiences. We become more willing to take risks, embrace challenges, and persist in the face of difficulty. Some ways to harness the power of yet in your own life. Add yet to fixed mindset statements. When you catch yourself thinking, I can't, I'm not good at, or I'll never be able to, tack a yet onto the end of the sentence. This small change can shift your perspective from limitation to possibility. Celebrate the power of yet with others. When you hear friends, colleagues, or loved ones expressing fixed mindset beliefs, gently remind them of the transformative potential of yet. Share Dweck's research on the impact of growth-oriented language. Embrace the word in your self-talk. Make a conscious effort to use yet in your inner dialogue, especially when faced with challenges or setbacks. Remind yourself that your current ability is not a fixed endpoint, but a work in progress. Use yet to reframe setbacks. When you encounter failure or rejection, 
resist the urge to interpret it as a final judgment of your worth. Instead, view it as a not yet, a temporary hurdle on the path to your goals. By intentionally incorporating this powerful word into your language and thought patterns, you can gradually shift your mindset in a more growth-oriented direction. Over time, yet can become a touchstone, a reminder that challenges are opportunities, that setbacks are temporary, and that your potential is always unfolding. As we've seen, the mindsets we carry about our own abilities profoundly shape our thoughts, feelings and behaviours. Whether we view our capabilities as fixed traits or malleable qualities can determine how we approach challenges, respond to setbacks, and ultimately achieve our goals. Fixed mindset individuals tend to see difficulties as threats to their self-image, feedback as personal attacks, and failures as evidence of their own inadequacy. This orientation can lead to a host of limiting behaviours, from avoiding challenges to giving up in the face of obstacles. Over time, it can create a self-fulfilling prophecy of stagnation and unrealized potential. Growth-oriented people, on the other hand, view challenges as opportunities for learning, feedback as valuable guidance, and setbacks as temporary hurdles on the path to success. This mindset allows them to embrace difficulties, persist through failures, and continually expand their abilities. Over time, it sets them up for greater resilience, achievement, and personal fulfillment. The good news is that mindsets are not fixed in stone. No matter how deeply entrenched our beliefs may feel, we all have the power to shift our perspective in a more growth-oriented direction. By becoming aware of our fixed mindset triggers and intentionally leaning into the power of yet, we can gradually rewire our default responses to challenges and setbacks. This shift begins with the messages we absorb and the stories we tell ourselves. When we celebrate effort over achievement, embrace struggle as a path to mastery, and view setbacks as opportunities for growth, we lay the foundation for a more resilient and expansive mindset. As parents, teachers, coaches and leaders, we have a profound opportunity to shape the mindsets of those in our care. By praising the process over the outcome, emphasizing growth over validation, and modeling a willingness to embrace challenges and learn from failures, we can cultivate a culture of resilience and lifelong learning. Individually, we can all benefit from Dweck's powerful insights. By examining our own fixed mindset triggers and consciously shifting our language and behavior in a more growth-oriented direction, we can tap into our full potential for change and achievement. This shift is not always easy. In moments of difficulty, our fixed mindset voice can be quite loud, tempting us to avoid challenges, blame others for our setbacks, or give up altogether. But with practice and persistence, we can learn to talk back from a place of growth, reminding ourselves that challenges are opportunities, that feedback is a gift, and that our potential is always unfolding. Over time, this intentional self-talk can become second nature. We can replace knee-jerk avoidance with determined engagement, self-doubt with self-compassion, and a fear of failure with a love of learning. In the process, we open ourselves up to a world of possibility, one where we are not defined by our setbacks, but by our willingness to grow from them. As Dweck writes, the path to a growth mindset is a journey, not a proclamation. It requires ongoing effort, reflection, and recommitment in the face of inevitable obstacles. But the rewards of this journey are immeasurable. A life of greater resilience, fulfillment, and impact. So let us all embrace the power of yet, the belief that our abilities are not fixed, but can be developed through dedication and hard work. Let us view challenges as opportunities, 
struggles as paths to mastery, and setbacks as springboards for growth. In doing so, we open ourselves up to the transformative power of a growth mindset, the key to unlocking our full potential and achieving our most cherished goals.